How's everybody doing? Good. Now, don't forget, we're being live streamed, so that means people are, like, watching this and, like, you know, can see you all not reacting. So how's everybody doing? Good. That's wonderful. Yeah, clap. Have some in it. Yeah. Some of y'all kids just want some money, so, like, you know, we should be, <laughs> we should be excited. Um, my name is Harold Green. I am the executive director of Flowers for the Living Foundation, and we are all gathered here today to celebrate our youth. Um, and not just the youth that have won this particular scholarship, but just the activity that has come around this scholarship. In the midst of, I think it was a little under a month, we put this out for CPS juniors alone. We were only going to accept 80 submissions. We got 37 submissions from CPS juniors all across the city. And I think that's a wonderful thing, and we should acknowledge that. And let's clap it up for youth actually wanting to write. Um, a couple of things about this particular scholarship. Um, in its infancy, the whole idea, I wanted to make sure, I'm on a rampage, right, uh, in the best way possible to create platforms and redirect the way in which we are celebrating our scholars across this city. And, and really, we hope to you know, change the mindset of a lot of people, but especially here in this city, we want to create a platform for scholars to feel celebrated warm and loved. And I think we do a great job of that with like athletes and influencers and cool folk. But what about the kids who come to school every day, put their head down, do their work, don't ask no questions, don't worry about nothing, get everything done, stay out of your hair. What happens to those kids? Do they get overlooked? Do we forget about them? No, we have to continuously create platforms to make sure those kids are getting acknowledged. So my thought was, okay, we have some very wonderful infrastructures within Chicago. We have a wonderful transit system where everybody meets each other, sees each other, sometimes don't say a word to each other, but we all kind of gather at some point, especially in the loop. I mean, you could, you could imagine how many people pass through there and you know, bodies touch and lives cross paths. And then you think about creative writing and how does, that, how does that ever intertwine within that existence? Well, every time we're on a platform or we're in the loop or we're inside of some of these stations, there's always words around us. There's always something. We see something. There's always marketing. There's always ads. There's always something that directs our lives and makes us think about what we're doing in those times that we're crossing paths. So what if we had the chance to take our students from across CPS? I mean, because students were the ones and kids were the ones who named those lines. What if we allowed those kids to change our minds, their words to change how we see, how we interact with each other, how we live amongst each other. I think that's an important thing to give those kids not just money, but the opportunity to help them change the way in which we see how we interact with each other and live amongst each other. So say so let's, let's have creative writing, let's see if CTA will mess with us, and let's see if we can get some money in this situation. All of these things are crazy because just one of those is a hard task to come across. But we got to CTA, then we all of a sudden got to Google. Then that last important piece, how we gonna get that money though? Cause that's a very, you know, people, yeah, that's great. Like, oh yeah, man, my kid gonna be on the CTA. Uh, how much you gonna give them? You know? And I think this leads to a very important um, conversation about relationships and friendships and making sure that you are open. And I'm more so talking, I and mean, this is everybody, but more so to our, our, our winners, making sure that you are open to new relationships and new friendships all across the board. I had a wonderful, wonderful event that I was a part of with Magnetar Capital. They do these amazing financial literacy classes for students across CPS. And, you know, <laughs> the CEO is a philanthropic humanitarian who just does all these amazing things and one of those wonder people, and you wonder how they have enough time in the day to even do the things they're doing. And I had a chance to sit down with Mr. Littlewitz and talk about my dreams and what I'm trying to do and how can we help each other you know, get these things accomplished. And I told him about the Color Line Scholarship, and he said, it's done. I said, what are you talking about? What do you mean? I thought it was like one of those, like, you know how you talk to people and they say, like, you know, speak positivity. It's done. It's already done. It's just, no, that's not it. <laughs> I'm going to pay for it, and it's done. And that moment, I felt like I lifted out of my seat a little bit. And to have people believe in not just your dreams, but also making sure that those dreams come into fruition is so important. But it wouldn't happen if you don't open yourself up to this world and the people that you meet. And through your words, you will meet so many people. You will create so many relationships. And through your words, you will change how people see their relationships and how they see each other. And I think that's so important. And that's why I want you all to be able to share your words with us tonight. 
because maybe we will see ourselves a different way, see ourselves in a different light, you know? So the way we're going to run this, we're going to have it in alphabetical order, okay? So this is not like, you know, this person had the best piece, so I'm going to put them up. This is alphabetical order, you know? I, I know kids, and I know how minds get to work, and know this is just know if your name starts with a certain thing, that's just what it is. So the way the format is, we're going to have our scholarship winners come up, and they're going to recite their piece. I'm going to ask them, what was going through your mind when you wrote that piece? Why did you write that piece like that? They're going to answer that question. We're going to take a group picture. They're going to sit down. Next person's going to come up. Smooth and simple, OK? All right, just so I know sometimes there's a lot of mystery and confusion about events and how things run. That's how it's going to run, OK? Very smooth and simple. Anybody that doesn't know what these people have won is $2,500. <laughs> Excerpts of their winning work placed along CTA stops for 90 days. That's a long time, OK? They get this wonderful event, but not only do they get to come in this space, in Google space, but they're also going to have a lunch at Google and a tour of Google's facilities. So I think that's really exciting, too, OK? And we still have some other things we're working on, too, I'm really excited to talk about. So, Coming up first, I want you all to clap your hands for Miss Ava Childers. Clap it up for Ava Childers. Um, hi, my name is Ava Childers. Um, Childers. I'm Childers. So sorry. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Um, and my poem is called My Stop, My Beginning. I sit, I wait, I observe. When people ask me what I love about my city, I say, it's depth. Chicago holds all walks of life, and luckily we have access to a way to explore every edge. Red. This is a red line train to Addison, the backbone of the city, stretching north to south, the bridge. A young boy, catching glove in hand, oversized Cubs hat, covers his dark ringlet curls. His fa he faces restlessly out the window, imagining how he will catch Anthony Rizzo's foul ball. Turning, he smiles at me between the Bryant and Baez jerseys. Doors closing. Brown, the beginning, beginning its journey at the center of the city. Out the windows are beautiful houses, ones that have been there for years, however, younger than the train cars themselves. Slow and steady wins the race to Kimball, swaying as the train crosses the river, gleaming, rippling, blue, the most picturesque by far. A woman with pearls reeks of Chanel number no. five, the scent of your grandmother. She holds her shoulders tall, back straight and confident. She is going to see her daughter, whom she has not seen in months, and her fiance, a big businessman. Nervous, growling stomach, her name was Linda. This is Armitage. Blue, dark underground, on their way to an adventure. A blue line train to O'Hare. A man and woman who hold two suitcases, wearing lays and floral shirts, checking their camera batteries. Oahu, a beautiful island, not as beautiful as Chicago, but they are both hearts of their states. Surrounded by water and tourism, they hold much integrity. Doors closing. Orange. Across the city is another pre-travel destination, Midway. Coming back from a possible five-hour flight, a tall boy wears a crew neck. USC written in gold letters accompanies his tan, sun-kissed skin, almost to the northern end of the line. Coming home to see his two siblings, mother and father, his dog staring out the window in preparation for his return, he stares out the same traveling window. This is the loop. Green. My mother said be careful, holding on tightly to train poles, shifting and bumping into my neighbor. I'm sorry, so sorry. University of Chicago kids do not know. Getting on the green line at Garfield, an excursion for them. They wave their phones, paying no attention to their surroundings. They do not know that I take the train because no other goes there. They take it for convenience. Someone must tell. Someone must tell them to put their phones away. Transfer to orange and red line trains at Roosevelt. Purple. Gaining its name from Chicago's Big Ten school, Wildcats. Contrary to common belief, Chicago Transport Authority transports to Evanston, too. Citygoers by day, suburbans by night. Trading red painted doors and white picket fences for sk skyscrapers. A mother and her baby, on their way to surprise father at work. The baby wails aching for his dad, almost there, almost to the city. If he had not gotten that job, her baby would not have his attention without this commute. She cannot be bitter, for she is grateful she gets to relive her childhood as a weekend visitor. Who can be mad here? Doors closing. 
yellow. Further down the tracks in a suburb far away, not too far. Yellow to red, red to yellow. These lines work hand in hand together to deliver. Skokie to Howard. Skokie, a small town in comparison to the city that reaches all the way north. A journey that deserves commending. Tears stream down her face as she reads her phone. May and her dad rode trains for fun when she was young. Train rides cleared her mind. Her mind was cloudy at Howard. Three missed calls. A mind clear hours later. It will be okay. I miss him. Dad, I miss dad. A temporary break from reality in a smallish town. This is Dempster Skokie. Thank you. Oh, no, no, you got to stay. You got to stay. Stay at your microphone. So, you know, I didn't get a chance to read until all the scores were in. And I, you know, was so, luckily. And I was so impressed with, because it would have been hard to pick eight out of you 37, so I'm just glad other people had that job, you know? So I was so impressed because a part of the rule, for all those who don't know, what they had to do, the prompt, they had to write about all eight colored lines and talk about how that experience looks, you know? So it's not just, we're going to just talk about the CTA and just kind of keep it moving. It had to be, it was a very specific thing. That's not an easy thing to do at all. So I was very impressed when people executed it at such a high level. And one thing I noticed about yours, your form, because on rubric, you know, you had to, they had to grade your presentation. And I think your presentation was so, it was engaging. You know, it wasn't just words on a page, it was a thought process, you know, and, and it looked like you had a lot of couplets with hard stops and your, your use of uh, enjambment seemed very intentional. I could be making all of this up and like, you know, <laughs> trying to show off my um, syntax here, but I, I really want to ask you, what were you thinking about in presenting this particular piece? Um, well, when I was like writing this poem, um, I was doing a unit in my English class like about Chicago, and we had to do like creative pieces about Chicago. Look how that worked out. So like, I was like already like in the mindset of thinking about um, like what I love about the city, yeah. and then this was just like more strict, but I do, I love, um, like thinking about the trains and like how cool it is that they don't have the, like the same way that we have it um, in other places. And so I kind of wanted to do like how the train starts and stops so like suddenly. Yes. So like I tried to do that in my yes. life. Yes. See, I knew it was, it, you are, you're really good, man. Right. Like <laughs> you, you all, I thought that you, when I first read you and I told my wife as soon as I was like, I think this young lady, when she got this prompt, Rode the train, all of the trains, because the way it was, it was way too like personal and like the the lady, the Linda and her business, you know, man, boyfriend and the boy with the baseball glove. I was just like, I feel like she hopped trains and was like, okay, I'm gonna write on each train that I get on. Did you have that type of experience, or this was just you just capsulating what you've been through in your life? Um, well. <laughs> For, I have not taken all eight lines you of the train. You could have fooled me. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but for the ones that I have, I felt like those were more personal. Yeah. And I felt like I, because like when I'm on the train, like this was kind of inspired by being, like seeing what people do on the train. Yeah. So I kind of like, um, like imagine who these people are, where they're going, what they're doing. That's beautiful. That's, that's, that's the world of a writer, people watching. So thank you so much, Ms. Childers. Thank you. I appreciate you. Before you, I'm sorry, I messed up my own format. Could you come back? I was, I got two. So I'm gonna ask Mr. Littlewitz to come up here, please. And did, did Ms. Howard make it? Ms. Michelle Howard, did she make it? Okay, Ms. Michelle Howard is the CPS scholarship manager um, who did such great work. She came to your school, didn't she, right? Is that, we, for, let me tell I don't know how I did. Jones has five out of the eight winners, okay? So, yes, yes. If, if I could have Miss Rule, too, if you can come to stage, please. Miss Stu, this, this, is, this is Mr. Uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel's wife. Uh, we are really good friends, too. I really, I really love Miss Rule. She had, I love her so much, her energy. If we could just have both of you all on stage, let's take this group picture real quick with Miss Childers. That would be awesome. So just prepare yourself each time, OK? You all are going to come up here, and we're going to take these group pictures, OK? Um, we can just kind of picture her. Yep, there we go. Why the 
wonderful. Thank you so much. So coming up next, Miss Sierra Lyons. Please tell me if I say your name wrong too, okay? That's right, okay. <laughs> Miss Sierra Lyons. Sierra Lyons, and the title of my poem is The Rainbow of Chicago. Red, R, riding pack trains like sardines all heading to a place to make a story that would be passed down, train stop to train stop. E, endless stops that travel through a maze we call home, a maze that we love, Chicago. D, darting eyes towards your phones and announcements, making sure that you don't miss your stop. You never want to miss your stop. Pink, P, passing by Aztec art on the 18th. I, icy platforms in the harsh Chicago winters that we all know to be careful on, very careful. N, navigating from Cicero to California and Clinton to Cermak. K, keeping your eyes on the window, never knowing that the person beside you could be your next, next friend. Orange, O, opening doors sliding to allow Chicagoans and outsiders to go on a ride that will take them to wherever they can imagine. R, riding this Chinatown, riding from Chinatown to Midway, gazing out the window and watching the world pass you by. A, anticipating to hear the two dings and the sound of doors closing that always follows. N, noisy as the train flows past your body, faster and faster until you see its light disappear, further, further, further down the tunnel. G, getting off of the train, ready to leave the CTA and face what Chicago has to hold for us, all of us. E, entering into a new Chicago at every stop. Yellow, why? Your stomach dropping as you see the red, noticing that you do not have enough money to enter the CTA. E, eyeing the amount of time until your train arrives, always looking up, minute by minute, hoping that the time will speed up. L. Yeah, L, sorry, my bad. <laughs> L, links to the red and purple line intertwining Skokie and Chicago, taking you outside of your home. Um, L, listening to your favorite tunes that help speed up a ride that goes on forever. O, only has two cars attached while other lines go on forever. W, wondering where those three stops will lead you to, what they will allow you to discover. Green, G, Garfield to Cottage Grove, north to south. R, roots, orange, red, and green all become one at Roosevelt. E, every person is occupied with their own lives, silence engulfing the cart. E, every stop pick up, picks up people who you've seen for the first time, dropping off people you'll never see again. N, never knowing who might get on next. Blue, B, Belmont to Damon, stopping to enjoy the culture of Wicker Park. L, lugging baggage onto the cart, owning that you are taking up too much space and are too anxious to arrive at O'Hare. U, unique voices singing, entertaining passengers at Jackson. E, evading eye contact with the patrolling officers led by muzzled German shepherds who you desperately want to pet, but know you can never. Purple. P, purple signs glowing as you see your ride approaching, ready to take you wherever you desire to go. U, up and down, north and south, connected to every line through the way. R, racing down the stairs after noticing that your train says departing. P, placing bodies in tan seats, holding onto gray bars. L, listening to other people's conversations, knowing that it is none of your business. <laughs> e, Evanston to Linden to Central to the Mart, everywhere you want to go. Brown, benches that serve as a seat for most, a bed for some, a home for few. R, Ravenswood branch to Merchandise Mart, all the way home and back. O, outsiders and tourists following the lines of the map, gliding their fingers as if the train itself is to navigate their way. W, wondering who might get on at the next stop. Who will you see next? N, no place has it like Chicago does. CTA, Chicago, home. Thank you. Now, I noticed that you were, I think you were the, hmm, I think you were one of two people who wrote an acrostic poem. Now, what made you go with that particular form? Um, Cause I feel like there's so much that, um, there is to talk about about the CTA, and I did not know where to start, so I thought this would give me an organized like outline on where to start and where to begin and where to include information about the red line and the orange line and all this stuff. I, th I thought it was brilliant. I thought because it's hard to do an acrostic and not feel r like a rudiment, like oh my god, this is so kindergarten. But I think you took 
that particular form and elevated it in such an elegant way. And I think you did a wonderful job, you know? Thank you. Congratulations, Ms. Lyon. <laughs> Ms. Rule and Mr. Littlewoods, if we could take this picture. And Mrs. Littlewoods, too, yes, please. Can we take, yes, you are here. I want, yes, please, both of you all. Can we, can we take this picture real quick? Go ahead and take this picture. Mr. and Mrs. Littlewoods is here now, um, the funders of the scholarship. I'm so excited. <laughs> Just be ready each time. Yep. Every time they come up here, we're going to take this picture. Every time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. So next up, I'm excited about this because, you know, Oh, my guys, they don't be writing. I don't know why, but they just act like, you know, they can't get their feelings out, whatever that is. So one of two guys that have won the scholarship this year, I want you all to clap your hands for Mr. Justin Powell, okay? Hello, everyone. How are you? Good. My name is Justin Powell. I'm a junior at Walter Payton College Prep, and I wrote a poem entitled Doors Closing. The rumbling on the train high above your head on the tracks. The distant roar that can be heard in any red line station. Shelter from the cold, coolness from the heat. J just a couple things the trains can do. It's ironic how doors closing can lead to so many open doors for you. And that's what's so magnificent about the trains that cover miles. Because on these tracks, you're bound to crack a smile. Whether it be someone at Jackson rapping a freestyle or young children laughing in the aisles. In a city that's so separate, a little integration could be nice at least. That's why the blue, pink, and green lines are so important, bringing people from the west to the east. The loop serves as the brain of the trains, each line branching out into the body of the beast. The south side, a side that's so fresh and so clean, there are lines red, orange, and green. The people here are angels, but society has labeled many of them mean, facing dirty looks just to go see the bean. If you like to trek north, take a break from downtown, you should hop on the L's, purple, red, or brown. Travel a little further, you'll find yourself, you'll find yourself at Howard, where friendly faces greet you with a hello. To get to Skokie, hop on the latest line, the yellow. It's no less important, just a little more mellow. In a city where you may only know people that look like you, the CTA trains hold us together like glue. Closed doors will help you get there no matter where you're going to. So never forget the lines, red, orange, yellow, green, purple, brown, pink, and blue. Thank you. I, you know, what I enjoy about your, first of all, you had way more rhyming schemes than everyone else, but I think what stuck out, stuck out the most to me was that one particular line, and I was so glad somebody else had a little audible reaction to it, when you said that the loop was the brain and it stemmed out to the beast. I promise you, I saw that. Because, you know, when you see the, the diagram on the trains and stuff like that, and, like, you know, it starts, I was like, that's such a brilliant line. That is, what started your piece? What line, what, where did you start? Where did you, because that, that made me think about, like, what is the origin, what was the origin of your piece? What was the origin? Yeah, so when I started how you touched on the rhyme scheme of my piece, I really was thinking about like a lot of the problems that the city faces, like de facto segregation or redlining. Uh -huh. So I took the rhyme scheme and I like the rhymes represented each people, like a race of people as their own. So I broke them up and separated them much like the city does in its own neighborhood. <laughs> you don't, you're not in high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as you said de facto, I knew you weren't. I was like, no, he's not. A, somebody lied about their, their age. It's okay. Yeah. You all are, you all are really, you, you all clap it up one more time for Mr. Justin Powell, okay? <laughs> Little Wits, Ms. Rule, can we take this picture real quick? Great job, sir. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. 
So another part of the work that my foundation does, we have um, free monthly writing workshops for all CPS high schoolers. Um, and this next young lady was showing up, showing up. She was having a great time. She never really got on stage, but I, she just, I was like, you gonna come back next time? Yes, she would always come back. She would bring a friend. I was like, look at you, girl, you're so dedicated. You're doing such a great job. And I was like, look, I'm telling y'all, this is the scholarship I'm creating. I'm, you all better make sure that you apply and all that great stuff. She's like, I'm applying. I'm like, OK, because uh, I know how kids can be. I don't see none of y'all writing nothing down, but all right, OK. <laughs> so I'm reading her stuff. And her, her reader actually gave her 400, which was the highest you can have. You know, that was like, and she was like, oh my god, I just love Jasmine's like transparency. And her reader is actually here, Emerald Green. You all clap it up for Emerald Green. She did a great job with the reading. <laughs> Um, my wife was a reader, Miss, Miss, Miss Charisma Sweat Green, she was a reader. <laughs> Miss Whitney Caps was a reader, you all clap it up for her, please. <laughs> and then uh, Mr. Kevin Koval from uh, YCA was a reader. And, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> And we had one more reader. Um, who was, the, who, was the, who was the last one? Or maybe I said it them all. No, Manisha. Manisha from Google, yes. Manisha from Google, yes. So she's, yes. So she got a 400, which was amazing, because that's like a perfect. And I was really excited. And I was like, oh, this is great. Then I saw, I said, oh, Jasmine, look at you. She's like, I told you I was going to apply. I was like, you did. So I'm so glad for Jasmine following through and just being an extremely wonderful and talented student. Y'all clap it up for Jasmine Sharp, OK? <laughs> Okay, so hi you guys. Um, my name is Jasmine Sharp and I'm a junior at Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. And I wrote a poem and this poem is entitled, These Lines. Okay. These eight lines tell many different stories, but that doesn't mean you should put us in different categories. These lines are geometrically intersecting, ocean crossing, street walking, watching, waiting to be taken somewhere outside of themselves. Isn't Chicago not divided enough? But this issue ain't one side enough. This is for all you public officials that say you make an effort to build in a dead of Chicago. Not to be critical, this might sound cynical, but all I'm seeing is a dead of Chicago. So I hope this love letter gets to you in time to lift up the spirits of these lines because in due time they will shine. Dear CTA lines, like, how did it feel when your best friend was stabbed on the back in the red line? These lines, this line is more than loose squares and locked jaws. The, illust the illustrious red line gives you a tour of the city that you see on the news. However, it's a biased view. These hardworking people have a lot to do. 95th to Howard lifts the city up. In the loo of the bridges that the blue brings, bitch. I'm sorry. Bridges where the heroin needles meet on sidewalks, yet this is the epicenter of Chicago medicine. There is no prescription to the vices in this part of the shy. The L is where you have learned that you are no better than anyone else. Many of us are just the same, scratching and surviving in a city that eats us alive. This is not the good this is not good times, never the best of times, just the worst of times, waiting for that one word to spark a fight. Brown is the, sin, is the heart of gentrification where heroes touch white hands, Ebonics comes out of white tongues, yuppies living off so-called ethical decisions. Heart of the GDs to heart of the BDs is where the green takes us. This adventure soon goes to the U of C. This creates a six-figure hitter who supports their city because that was truly matter. The property around the lot, hmm, sorry. The property around the line called Pink was cheap. So when you walk down 18th Street, the once culturally rich community is overruled by social justice warriors, not the people who really made it what it was. Wealth is stealth where the yellow line flows. Pockets they get in that dough, old money encapsulated in the old orchard, prime political fluence perched on per porches. This community is strong. Holocaust survivors reside where the red line flows. Sorry, yellow. <laughs> The pink and purple line is not being well known unless you're the city's very own, making our way to Northwestern to get that college education that we dream of, taking you from doctor, DACA dreamers to the inner city to the loop. The orange line gives the visitors in our city to exhibit the extension of culture oh so critically like is this Iraq or is this Chicago the world's purpose to see what these lines could truly be however the truth is these lines are accepting of each other this is no war like the media paints it out to be immigrants and minorities love each other these interwoven thick lines are rolled by people coming from the highs and low education Brack grounds are brought together and divided all the same but it wouldn't be lines without degrees of separation that are filled with our pain love your favorite CTA passenger
So you could, in, re in reading it, before I even heard you read it aloud, you can hear, um, you could read the breaks and the brutalness of the way in which you wrote it. And I think it all starts because it, it's almost like a, um, an introduction stanza of sorts, and then you kind of get into uh, like that that hard cutting uh, pattern of writing. Once you say you know about the backstabbing on the red line and things like that, what exactly were you trying to get across with your piece? Um, I was just trying to get across like the grittiness of the city and what it like truly looks like. Cause being from Chicago, like you know, it's not just like downtown. It's way more than that. Right. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. And I love how you signed off your favorite CTA writer. <laughs> what what was what was the was there an intention in that particular line? Um, the intention was to like truly see what was going on each of the lines, um, but mainly like the red line because that's what I wrote the most. Okay, you all clap it up for Miss Jasmine Sharp. Coming up next, another 400 score, Ms. Zoe Treadwell. Clap it up for Ms. Zoe Treadwell. Uh, hi, I'm Zoe, um, and my poem is called We Ride the Rainbow. We ride the rainbow on its elevated tracks. L trains sprint 55 miles an hour along the Chicago skyline, streaking their colors across the horizon. Red line dashes across polar lines, running north, south, and back north again. Hot and fiery, its flames lick train tracks that run to the city like blood runs to the heart. Orange line peels from the heart of the city, running those anxious to see the world home, away, and back home again. Yellow line, called Skokie Swift by those who know it best, runs to the ends of the city, stretching its fingers to the suburbs, back into the city, and to the suburbs again. Green line runs like the corner of a book, Filled with untouched pages and historical secrets, the devil in the white city walks, turns the corner, and walks again. Blue line throws its arms west. Its people follow from the seat of a train car. They watch the sun rise, set, and rise again. Purple line basks in the flames that rise from red, but splits like grapevines once the red line has run its course, going north into the loop and north again. Pink line runs over the river. Crossing its murky waters, the river seems to sparkle for those and only those lucky enough to catch its gleam. Water ripples and it gleams again. Brown line curves like the roller coaster you've never been scared of. Sliding slow, the train sneaks past each stop while you sit, going left, straight, and left again. In the city of wind and water, L trains sprint 55 miles an hour along the skyline. Never stopping, they streak their colors across the horizon. We ride the rainbow. I think you did such an amazing job. At, one of the things that we talk about in our writing workshops is making sure that you're using sensory words, right? And making sure that you're very descriptive, making sure that we can see, touch, feel, taste, hear the words, you know? And when reading yours, I noticed so many ways that you flip the color into something else that was that color without being so, uh, blatant about it, you know, uh, even with the purple and the grape and, you know, stuff like that. I thought it was so amazing. Was that something that was intentional or was that something that just kind of started happening as you were writing? Um, I think at the beginning it was intentional. Like, I talk about the orange line peeling from the heart of the city. I was trying to reference, like, an orange there. Right, correct. And then it just, like, kept happening, so I went with <laughs> I, I, lo I loved it so much, and it made me think about uh, reading Rainbow every time. I like it just, It's just like this shooting star of like colors. I don't know. It was very about You all are such good writers. We could, let's do this group picture. You did a great job.
So coming up now, our second, our two of two males who have won this scholarship. <laughs> Mr. Luke, and make sure I'm saying this right, Lucas Vogel. Is that right? All right. Clap it up for Lucas Vogel. Hi, I'm uh, Lucas Vogel. I go to Jones College Prep, <coughs> and I'm sick. <laughs> um, welcome to Chicago. We're happy to have you. You can hop on the blue line, and from there you'll travel past Montrose, past Irving, past Addison, past Belmont. You've made it to David with good hipster restaurants. Umami Burger, they know what they're doing. You can place in your order the menu you're viewing, then, ride, then back to the blue line, no longer famished. Ride it to Jackson, from the blue line you've vanished. You can check out the Harold Washington Library, the biggest in Chicago with genres that are varied. Hop on the brown, my feelings are down, my smile is upside down. Passes Trump Tower, the man of the hour, for whom my feelings are sour. Take the line to DePaul, although the cart might teeter, the train won't fall. The classes are rigorous, but you can succeed. This is Chicago, the city of dreams. Transfer to red, just like a stop sign. It passes the Haycock, and uh, it, uh, Howard to 95th, yet yeah, might be the best line. It passes the Haycock and right next to my school. Go up to Addison, for it is pretty cool. You're at Wrigley Field, a stop so historic. If a W is flying, the feeling's euphoric. Hop on a train going south, go see a game. The White Sox are playing with the worst stadium name. Then take the purple to Evanston while it's still light. It's almost Chicago, but mostly not quite. The home to the Northwestern Wildcats. With foods such as Buffalo Joe's, you're sure to get fat. The Skokie Swift or the line that's yellow might be the line for you if you're a suburb fellow. The train is clean with not many stops. It'll get you to work on time, for that really rocks. If you prefer a train that deals in the city, hop on the pink. If you don't, I pity. Head to Pilsen and get you a treat of some tacos, tapas, or churros to eat. West side to south side, like coast to coast. When looking at culture, the green line's the most. Bronzeville and indoor gardens await. And if attractions were food, you'd have a full plate. You've had fun, you've observed, you've eaten the town, from red, blue, green, purple, yellow to brown. However, now you must return to your home, jump on the orange, and get ready to be flown. Off to Midway, with the sun setting low, down to the south where our officers go. The firemen, too, they sleep near these tracks. When it comes to a crisis, they act fast, never slack. But enough about them, as my final rhyme, I ask you one, one thing. Won't you come again sometime? <laughs> Now, Lucas, what I really appreciated about yours, yours was the one that felt most like lyric. And, um, you know, there's a lot of couplets and things in there. But also, I think what was really refreshing about it, it, it almost had a limerick-esque feeling to it because it, it had that, like, humor undertone. So was that, was that something you were going for? Or what was your intention in writing the piece? Well, I just know that I've always really liked making jokes, and I'm pretty good at it. Yeah. So when I first approached, I mean, <laughs> you got to be confident, man. You got to own it. You got. I'm, I'm with that. On. Go with it. <laughs> yeah. um, and so when I first approached this, I was thinking of doing a funny story. Um, but I had just written, I think, almost seven stories for school, uh -huh. just from approaching finals time. Yeah. So I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's so burned I was out. Like writing a song, and I, I, I want it to be hard hitting. But on me, so right. I'm just gonna joke around with this, and it just kind of all came together at the end. Yeah, no, it, it came together really well. Yours, it was it was very, it was very light, but very informed. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think, because I think that's where you can kind of lose sometimes if if you're lighthearted, but you're also ill-informed. So it's like I'm gonna crack a bunch of jokes, but I don't really know what I'm talking about. You know, <laughs> you were very informed. Like I loved, I love the White Sox line because I cannot stand that guaranteed rate. I don't know what that means, and I don't like it. You know, so thank you so much. Let's get these uh, group photos. Congratulations. So with that being said uh, about the Write It Out um, free workshops that we put on, along with those free workshops, we have youth ambassadors. And those are students that we have put in place to 
basically be uh, many ambassadors and promoters and marketers and leaders within the writing workshops. And this young lady I have been aware of and known of since eighth grade, and I am so honored to like call her a mentee of mine. And I told her, I said, hey, I'm not going to be reading these. I don't have nothing to do with it, but you better make sure that you get your stuff in. And she made sure she got it in. And I'm so proud of her for making it this far and just continuously being the writer that she is. You all clap your hands for Damianti Wallace. Hi, um, my name is Damianti. I go to Shy Arts and I'm a poetry major there. So this was kind of there for me, right? <laughs> a city of grid. Colored lines blurred the colored lines, but racist structures still find its way into the train lines. The red line gets way less crowded after Roosevelt, and the green line finds a new family at Garfield. Black and brown bodies never touch yellow lines. We don't even know what's over there. White bodies scared of 95th and Dan Ryan. They're scared of the people that live down there. The city that's windy reminds us there's a place for us all. When the trains intersect, when you can transfer to red, orange, and green, Everybody comes together in one, strain, one train station, running to a destination meant for them or completely out of their comfort zone. I once took a walk to a pink line and I'd never seen anything like it, like I was entering a new world, seeming like the pretty colors always take us to new places. The purple line parades us into Evanston, like a new wave, didn't even know they went out there. The brown line moves like slug, could write a whole book between stops. It usually only connects us to our actual train lines, used as a transfer never all the way there. The blue line has this way of expressing who we are, taking us to spaces we wish we could be a part of, wishing this was your side of town, that you knew the line better. This city of grid, make sure we know our side, rep it till we die, make sure we know our line, our home, and that we never make it to the other side. Thank you. So in, in, re in reading yours, I. I assumed, and I think, it's, I think it's a fair assumption, that your particular piece was a very specific thing about the African-American experience within the CTA as a whole. So is that a right assumption, and what made you go that route? Uh, yes, that's a right assumption. Okay. And I've been doing a lot of like artivism work where like I've been taking like my activism and my art and kind of like moving them, like intertwining and trying to make sure that they stay on the same level. Right. And so um, when I was writing this, I was like, okay, how can I make sure that like the story of mine and the story of people who look like me is told? Because a lot of times like there are these assumptions made about the lines that we've heard from like few other people who I've read as well. And I think like. I just wanted to make sure that this was the purest form of the story and like of my story. Right. And then um, when it was said that like people will be reading this on the train lines, like what story do I want them to know? And, right. Like, is what they're going to be standing there and like is this what I want them to know? Like right. do I want them to read like a sugar coated version or do I want them to know like what's actually happening? Like here's your truth and here's my truth all wrapped up in one. So I yeah. think that was just like the motive. I think that's beautiful. I think that's wonderful. Let's take our picture. I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And last but not least, Miss Nicole Wanzi. Wozni. 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 Nicole Wozni. Clap it up. Oh, I'm too short. It keeps falling. That's fine. OK. Hi. My name is Nicole Wozni, and I uh, also go to Jones College Prep. And this is the eight colors of my Chicago life. When I go to bed at night, the last thing I hear is the soft lull of the trains passing near my house. I was born and still live in downtown Chicago in the forever changing South Loop. The trains have always been around me, part of me. The eight different colors of the train lines tell the story of how people from all over the world are connected by these colorful threads that bring us all together. The red, yellow, brown, green, purple, orange, pink, and blue lines all have their own special personalities and quirks. 
Chicago is strong, like the red line which connects the north and the south, running the entire length of the city. It sees the heaviest flow of people, it sees the least fortunate, and it wears the badge of diversity like Chicago itself. The red line carries all those trying to get to the beach or to catch a game at Wrigley Field or get that famous, famous rainbow cone off of 95th. I love the edgy feel of the red line and the characters who cross your path. The red line is full of life, my life. If you're like me, you have friends all over the city as well as the suburbs. When we really miss each other, we agree to meet in the middle. The perfect spot, Old Orchard Mall, and the yellow line takes me there. The yellow line is unique because it has the fewest stops. This really comes in handy when you're in desperate need of some shopping therapy. I love how the yellow line connects me with my friends in the suburbs. Our surroundings may be different, but the yellow line keeps our friendship alive. The brown and green lines trace the city in every direction. Chicago has so many amazing neighborhoods and places. The food, the people, the cultures, and the buildings seem so different from each other, yet somehow all find a way to connect and work together. Every imaginable event, from a baby shower in Oak Park, to a play at the Goodman Theater, to a prom in a school on the west side. No destination is too far for the CTA train lines. The brown and green lines bring you to your life events. Sometimes I take the purple line to visit my mom's small business near Howard Station. My mother is an immigrant who came to Chicago 30 years ago. Her dream was to open her own business, which she did, and it still stands in Rogers Park today. The purple line takes me to her shop, and then we continue on to Evanston for a movie. The purple line is the CTA smart line. It makes it easy to visit the north side, which means that, like my mom, you can live in the South Loop and work on Devon Avenue. Did I mention it also lets you out right by Loyola University in Northwestern? Like I said, it's the smart line. <laughs> my dad often hops on the orange line to take him to Midway Airport. Business flows through Chicago constantly. The CTA color lines make business travel just a little easier. The orange line will always get you to your plane. Now whether your plane is on time or not is a whole nother story. The pink line is young and fresh. It doesn't quite have the same strain of time and wear on it like the others do. A Chicago kid picked the color. That's how much these train lines are ingrained in our lives. The blue line really sums up the story of Chicago. We are in an international city. People come here to work, to study, to see what we are all really about. If you are flying on your next trip or vacation anywhere in the world, you are flying from O'Hare Airport. The blue line takes you to O'Hare, and it will take you anywhere in the loop. The, lo the blue line brings families together, brings business partners together, and most importantly, it connects the people of Chicago to the rest of the world. The blue line can whisk you away to your next adventure, and when you are all done, it brings you right back home. The blue line is the vein of our city that never stops pumping the energy that visitors bring with them to this place we call home. The CTA color lines bring the smells, the sights, the multitudes of ethnicities, the neighborhoods, and the tears and triumph of our great city together as one. One melting pot that is Chicago. The eight CTA color lines are the thread that weave the tapestry of our wonderful, complex, and beautiful city. We are all going places, near and far, venturing off on our own journeys, and the CTA lines will take us there, one color at a time. First of all, let me commend you on tackling the short story form, okay? Because I had a couple of other writers who tried it. It's a very difficult thing to do, especially with this particular prompt, because it's a very thin line between um, research sounding mm -hmm. and personal story, you know? And I think you did a great job of staying in first person very consistently, but you also gave us a very vivid and colorful, you know, no pun intended, story, you know, that I think that we were able, we, we learned so much about you and the city, you know, your mom's story, your mom's store, you and your dad's relationship, the travelers that come in, you know, it went from, it went from here to here, and I thought you did a great job with that. So what was your mindset going into the short story form? Well, I think I wanted to describe each line as if it were a person, because you know, no person is unique, or the same. Correct. Just like how each line has its own unique things and uh, quirks and personalities, and I think that even though we're all so different, just like how the lines intertwine, so do we. Right. And the way we intertwine is through our transportation system. We all have to deal with getting on them and the different people we encounter and the wonderful experiences we have on them or the terrible experiences we have on them. And I think like, I just wanted to stay true to 
people and people's individuality, but at the same time, our closeness and collectiveness. Well, you sound like you wrote a graduation speech. So, you know, if, if, if at any time you become too. valedictorian, I'll just, just yeah. keep it in the pocket, OK? Because yeah. it was beautiful, all right? Let's take this uh, group picture. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. I have to say thank you one more time to Google. M listen, please give a loud, roaring round of applause for Google. <laughs> Rob, Josh, Manisha, Roberto, like they, when we got all of this together and we had our lunch and we sat down and we started, they're some of the nicest people Period. Just that, that I've met. I meet a lot of people, man, but they are so welcoming and just warm. And, you know, it was just a beautiful thing to even conceptualize, but for them to be so open and welcoming about it, it made me realize this is what I'm doing it for, right? So you all can materialize dreams that seem unthinkable and seem unimaginable. My whole thing was to make sure that you all believe that there is a path a lucrative path and also a fundamental and impactful path through creative writing. You know, that's why that question was on there like, would you think of a creative writing career? Because so many times we think that this is, this is, you know, I write poems, I write some short stories, they're in my journal, I'd be journaling, and like that's just the end of it. You can actually take these words, these pages, these journals, and change people's lives, including your own. I come from Southside, Inglewood. Every day I come home, it was fights in my yard, fights in my gangway, fights in front of the house. But I knew love, you know? And that's what I took from my experience as a kid into an adult, into my artistry. And that's what I try to put out every single time I do something. And the fact that Google was so welcoming to this idea and to this platform and to you, this inaugural group, of creative writers who will take your works and take your minds and change this world through your words, I think is so amazing. They didn't have to do this. They didn't have to care, you know? But they care about you all, and I think that's amazing. So let's clap it up one more time for Google, please. Um, a big thank you to CTA. A lot of conversations, a lot of hard work, getting things in order and getting things moving forward, and I'm so excited Oh, I can't wait to see you all's works across those those platforms. That's gonna be oh, that's gonna be so beautiful. I'm gonna be so excited. We're gonna have to like make it a, a thing. You know, we're gonna like travel and take pictures and then like have dinner or something like that and celebrate it. You know, I think it's gonna be great. Um, CPS was so wonderful. Ms. Michelle Howard, you made it. I did, I was looking for you to take these pictures. You you just, you just it was a, it was a, it was a thing. <laughs> Man, I was trying to take the please clap it up for Michelle Howard. Man, she is oh my god. Michelle has been so, Michelle went to school with my wife. And you know, I hit her up and I'm like, yo, I got this, I got this great idea, just work with me, just stay with me, I, I'm gonna make it happen, I promise you. She stuck with me and she just saw it into fruition. She talked about it at the different schools she went to, these kids hit her up and told her, oh my God, I actually did it and I won. And I've just been so thankful. She's such a positive person and has all of these kids' best interests at heart and I'm so glad that someone like that is working in CPS. You all, thank you, Michelle, thank you. Um, Magnetar Capital, the Little Wits, I can't say enough about how much someone believes, because see, I think what we don't think about sometimes, people can be positive and they can believe in you, but when people start going into their pockets, no matter how deep or short their pockets are, it really doesn't matter. The fact that people believe in your dreams enough to materialize them and fund them and say, hey, I think this is good enough to make this happen. I can't ask for anything more. And the friendships and relationships that are coming out of these wonderful ideas that we're sharing with each other, I think is so beautiful. You all clap it up for the Little Wits and Magnetar Capital one more time. And last but not least, FFTL Foundation. I could not do this without this wonderful cast of people. 
uh, my wife, who is the treasurer, uh, one of my best friends from high school, who is my director of communications. Uh, we have our photographer here. We have our videographer and photographer here. Everybody that has been a part of making this happen, I thank you so much. Everybody who's watching, family members, and everybody who is supporting this particular situation, I can't wait to do it again. I'm going to get with each and every one of you all. We're going to make sure that we make this lunch and tour happen and do some more wonderful things, okay? Thank you all so much for making your time and doing this. Thank you. Thank you.